close your eyes and focus on your breath. Know when it's coming in, know when it's going out. Notice where you feel the breath and ask yourself, does the breath feel comfortable? If it doesn't feel comfortable, you can change. You can make it lighter or heavier, deeper or more shallow, longer or shorter. Play with it for a bit to see what feels best. When you find something that feels good, stick with it. And after all, the breath is the force of life. It stands to reason that a force of life is, is in good shape. Okay, and it's going to be good for the body, and it's going to be good for the mind. And yet all too often we ignore it, we overlook it. We don't realize what benefits we can gain from staying focused on the breath. It's good not just for the body, but the mind as well, because the mind needs a place to stay. Otherwise it wanders around. And when it, you know what happens when people just wander around without any shelter? When it rains like this, they get cold. When it's hot, they, they get all fried up by the heat. When it's windy, when it's whatever, all kinds of problems outside if you don't have shelter. But if you have a good place to stay inside, then no matter what things are like outside, you're okay. It's the same with the mind. If it has a good, comfortable place to stay with the body, then things that other people do, things outside, can go right past. They don't have to have an impact on you. That's why it's important to have a place like this with the breath. And the breath is the aspect of the body that you have some control over. You can't control your stomach as it digests, and you can't control the nerves as they fire, but you can control your breath. And so work on finding a rhythm of breathing that feels really good. It'll be nourishing for the body and nourishing for the mind. In fact, today is commemorating the day that the Buddha gave his sermon, or gave his discourse on breath meditation. It was the last day of the rainy season, full moon in November. The monks stayed up all night, and he gave a very long discourse explaining all the benefits of breath meditation. This course doesn't mean we do this once a year, we do it all the time, but it's good to remember that there was a specific day, and here it is. So try to put some extra time and extra energy into getting in touch with your breath. Because it's the breath that enables us to withstand other things that happen in life. You have the breath as your companion, you have your breath as your friend. Then when the things that are difficult to endure in life, things like heat and cold and hurtful words from other people, you realize, okay, you don't have to go out there and try to feed off of those things. You don't have to go them, scoop them up and bring them into the mind. You can just watch them pass, pass, pass. Because the things the Buddha said we shouldn't endure, things like greed, aversion, and illusion, for some reason we love to hang around with these things. When we fear fear, when we fear anger, when we fear, feel jealousy, when we fear fear. Okay, these things we hang around with a lot, and for some reason we find it very easy to endure these things, even though they make life difficult for the mind and then force us to do things that are going to have a bad impact for a long time into the future. So the Buddha said we have things backwards. The things we should endure are the hurtful words and the heat and the cold and whatever from outside, because those things pass. And they don't necessarily have long-term repercussions, at least not as long as the repercussions that come when you do or say or think something under the influence of greed, aversion, and delusion. So when greed, aversion, and delusion come up into the mind, you've got to step back and say, okay, I don't have to identify with it, I don't have to act on that, and try to find some reason to counteract that. In other words, when greed comes up, remind yourself, okay, the things that I want there, what would happen if I actually got them? And remember, there are drawbacks to almost everything. You want to put up with the drawbacks? Sometimes the mind says yes, but another part of the mind that's a little bit more responsible says no, it's not worth it. And here this Buddha is not saying don't go out and try to make a living, it's just don't try to be greedy for things that are beyond your capability to gain in a legitimate way. As for aversion, the people you're angry at, you remind yourself, okay, they have some good to them. Try to keep their good in mind. If you can't find any good in the people at all, you say you have to feel really sorry for them, because they're making life miserable for themselves for a long, long time to come by acting in those horrible ways. When delusion comes up, and of course, you, it's hard to know when you're deluded, but what you have to do is test your actions and look at the results. And if you see that something that looked okay gave harmful results, then you make up your mind you're not going to repeat that mistake again. So there's an antidote for each of these. The important thing is we learn that not to endure them. We try to use the antidote as soon as a little bit of greed comes up, or a little bit of anger, or a little bit of delusion. Try to counteract it. Don't let it hang around and become your master. Because what happens is if you can't endure pain, if you can't endure cold and heat and hurtful words, other people can control you. But if you can endure those things, okay, then you're in control of yourself. If you endure the greed and aversion and delusion that come up in the mind, you allow them to stay there, you allow them to set up their home inside your mind. Okay, 
Again, you've lost control. They are your master, you're their slave. So if you want freedom, you have to understand, okay, things outside that you have to learn how to endure, and things inside that you don't allow to stay around. That way the mind maintains its freedom. What it does, it does knowing that it's going to get good results from its actions. When it speaks something, you know you're going to get good results from what you say. Because you're acting out of clarity, you're acting out of knowledge, and not out of greed or aversion or delusion, or under the fear of heat or cold or hurtful words. So this is how the mind maintains its freedom, by learning what to endure and learning what not to endure. And using the breath as its place to stay, so you can make a so you can see clearly which is which.